Hello, my name is Ryan with Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own 3D printed drum sander for detailing and cleaning 3D printed parts. The sander uses a variable speed controller to gently sand parts with progressively finer sanding sponges to give your 3D prints that finished look. Let's get started. first thing you're going to want to do is head over to Thingiverse and download the STL files I'll be using. The files have built-in supports so you can just print them as they are with no extra supports required. You will also need a 6mm shaft 200 RPM high torque worm gear motor with a DC speed controller to adjust the speed. Then you will need a 12 volt power supply with a female barrel connector like this one. For the frame, you will only need one 608 bearing that will be pressed into the opposite side of the motor. Be sure to press this in last. It will make it easier to attach the sanding drum if you save it for last. For the sanding drum, you will need a 6mm shaft aluminum hub mount. You will also need to pick up a 3M sanding sponge variety pack in four different grits from fine to microfine, which is about 400 to 1500 roughly. You can also pick up some of these Tamiya sponges instead, as they are the same size, thickness, and grit as the 3M ones. It really just depends on what is more readily available to you. Lastly, you will need some super glue, M3 bolts, and some wires. Now on to assembly. The first thing you want to do is cut out the built-in supports that were added to the frame. If you printed this at point 3, you will have a single layer to remove. Just cut it out of the section holding the motor and the hole for the speed controller. Take the motor and solder wires onto the bottom terminals. I also like to attach these wire ferrules for a better connection to the terminals, but it's not required. I also find it easier to hook all of the wiring up first before everything is attached into the case. Now attach the wires to the barrel power connector that will eventually go to the speed controller. I then attach the wires from the motor to the first two terminals on the left side of the speed controller. First the negative on the left, and then the positive to the right of that. You should be able to tell which terminal is positive on the motor by the red dot on the bottom next to the positive tab. Then the positive power goes to the third terminal, and then the negative power on the far right in the fourth terminal. If you are unsure about any of these connections, you can flip over the speed controller and you should see the terminals listed there. I've also added a PDF on Thingiverse that shows all of the connections. After everything is hooked up, you can install the motor, speed controller, and power barrel onto the case. The motor screws in with four M3 bolts from the outside. The speed controller attaches using two M3 bolts on the inside. You first need to remove the knob on top and place it through the hole in the case. Now the power barrel pushes through the square opening on the bottom. You might also want to secure this with hot glue to keep it in place. Now that all the electrical is hooked up, it might be a good idea to test it to make sure everything is working correctly before you screw on the case cover or add the center sanding drum. Looks like everything is working. Let's move on to the center sanding drum. Before we assemble that, we want to make the sanding rings that are going to be placed on the shaft. You want to take the sanding sponges and cut them the long way. These sponges are 114 millimeters wide by 140 millimeters long. So we want to cut them so they are 40 millimeters by 140 millimeters. Then take some super glue and place it on the short side to make a ring. Try to cover the whole end with super glue, but try not to get any on the top sanding surface if you can help it. Do the same thing for all four different grits. Now take the smaller section of the center shaft and remove the built-in support under the holes in the center. Yeah. 
Then take the 6mm shaft hub mount and attach it with the shaft facing out on the side with the larger holes in the 3D print. The bolt should be attached from the opposite side of the part. Be careful to not use bolts that are too long as they may hit the bolts mounting the motor to the case. You will also notice a small hole on the side of the 3D printed part. This should line up with the set screw hole on the side of the mount. Once the hub motor is attached, we can connect the smaller section of the shaft to the larger one with three bolts through the large hole seen here. It might be easier to attach the two sides with something like a 1 8 wood screw, but you can use your M3s as well. With the shaft complete, we can now slide the sanding rings onto the shaft in order by grit. If you have the Tamiya sanding sponges, that's really easy. You just have to look at the numbers on the back. If you have the 3M sponges, the order goes from low to high, fine, super fine, ultra fine, and lastly, microfine being the highest. With the sanding sponges on the shaft, we now want to connect the shaft to the motor. Place the hub mount on the motor shaft and tighten it down with the set screws on the center of the shaft and the one through the hole on the side of the 3D printed part. Again, make sure there is clearance between the bolts holding the mount and on the bolts attaching to the motor to the case. With everything else attached, we can now add the 608 bearing to the hole in the end and line up the shaft with it. Now you can start sanding using the lowest grit first and working your way up to the highest grits for a smoother and more finished parts. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to see in the comments if you created one. And I hope you guys enjoyed this.